Designing websites for mobile devices uh, is a totally different story than when we want to create something for desktop screens. In fact, we have different ways of interacting with the content. The screen sizes are completely different, so we need to think more about the hierarchy of the content. And sometimes uh, you also need to cut things down in order to create a better UX. So today I'm gonna guide you throughout my entire process when I want to optimize everything from desktop to mobile devices. I'm gonna show you everything on a real project giving me from a real client, so you can take my entire workflow and integrate it into your design process and you can step up your game right away. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing that we absolutely have to keep uh, on the mobile version of the website is the photo of Steve Angelo because uh, this website is mainly focused on him. We absolutely need to keep that in order to create person to give personality to the website and it's also a main focus. Another thing is the year of the dates and on the tours, which I absolutely basically is one of the most important things because it represents the year of all the dates. This text part right here is a smaller wrap up of the biggest places of the tours and I we can actually keep that. I think that is pretty cool. It adds detail. Plus, it's an introduction to all the dates. So I think that we need to keep that. This detail right here, which is going to be an animation, is something that we can easily add to the mobile version of the website without any problem in terms of layout so i think that it's not going to be a problem and we need and we can keep that one thing that we can remove because it's not that important and uh, it's going to be a little bit trickier to add that uh, is uh, this video right here because uh, it's not necessary again and uh, it allows us to create a faster UX on mobile devices. So this is going to be the content that we actually need to keep that for the mobile version of the website. Of course uh, we're gonna keep the uh, call to actions uh, and the logo, we're gonna resize everything uh, because we don't have a lot of call to actions. Uh, we can actually avoid uh, creating a menu icon uh, and, an actual men and an actual menu, so we don't have problems with that. Uh, and going in the second section of the website, so basically this is going to be an animation, a panel, uh, that is, as the user scrolls down, uh, this comes up with a lot of animations for the text, uh, which I haven't implemented yet, but it's going to be on the website. Uh, and uh, we can actually keep everything, but uh, we need to change the layout because right now, this is a layout that is developed on the horizontal axis. So as you can see here, we have these columns that divide all the content. And of course on mobile, because we have less real estate to work with, we need to change the layout from horizontal to vertical. But we're gonna see that later on in the video is extremely simple, but we need to think about a, lot, a little bit about the UI and the spacing between the content. And we're gonna have the same thing on the playlist page, because as you can see, again, we have a layout that is developed on an horizontal axis and on mobile devices we want to keep everything vertical so we're gonna have the same thing here. Another part of the composition that we need to change is this part right here because as you can see again here is in the on the side so of course on mobile devices we can't keep that on the side and we need to put that below all the data. This is not a super important part of the website, it's not something that the user can't avoid but we can put it below all the content it's not a problem and this content right here we don't have to make any changes because uh, this uh, is an animation so again uh, we don't we don't have to put anything else and the rest uh, is the same content that we have above so we don't have to put anything else on anything different i hope that everything is clear and now we can move on actually designing the mobile version of this website so first of all let's start by creating an iphone 14 pro max in this case a frame for the mobile device i, I use this one because i find myself designing better on a smaller screen so and this is bigger than the other ones but it, it really doesn't matter so the first thing that i always do when i start i just duplicate the elements i scale them down just to see them in the frame it does doesn't matter right now the scale of the elements and the composition of the layout etc but it's just a matter of I don't want to go back and forth between the desktop version of the website and the mobile one I have everything in place just for the moment for the hero section and now I start creating the layout grid for the mobile version of the website so I create columns four columns with 24 margins and zero gutter for the logo I want to keep it a little bit bigger because it perfectly fits the style of the website plus it has a lot of personality to it so I think that we need we can keep it like somewhere around there and for 
for the call to actions, uh, as we previously mentioned, we don't need to create a menu button because uh, we just have to call to actions, so yes, it's unnecessary to create a menu button, but the only thing is to actually space them out uh, because uh, I don't know if it happened to you. Sometimes uh, when you navigate a website or you play a game uh, on your mobile phone uh, and the call to actions are too small and too narrow, to 99% of the times so you press the wrong button, so I don't want that to happen in this website. Another thing is uh, instead of 29 pixels for the uh, font size, I want to use 24, which I think works better in the, in the mobile version of the website. Now, one thing that I don't really like is that the height of the block of the call to actions on the right is a little bit higher, it's a little bit taller than uh, the logo, so that might look like a mistake and I don't really like that. So create another small call to action, uh, which I think is the best way to do everything. Plus uh, we balance the, the logo with the three call to actions uh, and nothing else. Uh, something like top, uh, back to top uh, is one, one call to action that is really useful uh, on mobile devices. I want to resize the image uh, to have just to have the his face uh, in the middle of the screen uh, so we can creep, keep the eye contact uh, for, for the image uh, and for Cianjello with the user. I think that is a uh, really impactful way to introduce a website uh, and this is a here section so as soon as the user lands on the page uh, it's going to be pretty impactful. Now I want to create the second section uh, just by putting this content right here which is going to be a really nice way to introduce uh, all the dates of the website and of, of the tours. So let's keep that like this uh, and I uh, just want to reduce the size of the title uh, and increase the ones of the subtitles but still uh, a little bit smaller of the call to actions because I've used uh, 20 pixels for the subtitle uh, and 24 for the call to actions. Let's align the text on the center instead of having a really weird composition like we had on the desktop version of the website because this is a faster way to consume the content and as you can see here as I previously said this is not necessary as an element in the website but because it is super easy to implement in the mobile version of the website it doesn't take a lot of space and it's not something that you get crazy trying to optimize it for mobile devices. We can keep it and it adds a lot of details and personality to the website so I think that we can keep it and pay attention to the spacing between the elements I try to always keep the same spacing to have consistency throughout the website. Now for the moment we can keep it like that and maybe we can come back later to make any changes if you want and on for the font sizes or the composition and now we can actually start creating the composition and optimizing everything for the dates and for the tours. So I wanted to use 96 instead of 126 for the font size of the 2023 because if I go back uh, to 126 uh, for the 2023, you can see that we barely have the space uh, for the 2023 and I know that to keep consistency throughout the website, I want to use the same font size for the, every single one of the titles. Uh, and so as you can see here, if I put 20, 126, uh, we don't have the space for the month, uh, for the name of the month. Uh, so I want to keep uh, 96 uh, and in that way we just uh, have the space to put August. Uh, in the composition. So now that we have the name of the month, we can start changing the layouts right here to from horizontal to vertical. And let's start by copying the actual names and dates. And as you can see, we still don't have the space to put everything in one line. So the consideration that I want to do here is that Thursday is not as important as the number and the place. So I think that we can do something like that uh, we can use and uh, we can still uh, keep the Thursday but something like that aligned to the, the 15 so to the number of day and the place uh, is below so as you can see if you create uh, just uh, the right amount of space between uh, all the dates uh, it's super user friendly it's super understandable uh, clear and clever so we can use uh, this kind of layout right here to create something that still has a lot of detail uh, still uh, has all the information that we need for all the dates and we are not sacrificing anything but we're just changing the layouts. Plus I'm imagining to consume the website as uh, like a customer and I know that when I'm looking for a date of a tour of an artist I want to know the date, the number, the place uh, and maybe if it's Sunday or Saturday or Monday. So I know that I have all the information right here. It's super user friendly. Now the last element that we need to optimize for the landing page for the mobile version of the website is the call to action for the gallery. And we want to keep it. It's not that important and we can see it in the composition because 
As you can see, the most important parts of the website are the call to actions, the image, the year of the dates, and all the dates. The composition speaks by itself, and right now we are putting the call to action to the gallery. It's not important, but yet we want to keep it because it creates something that is visual, it has a lot of colors, pops, and contrast. So I want to do something like that, and I want to uh, cover all the space, all the width, basically, of the composition. So right now, we have finished with the layout of the page, and to a Optimize uh, everything for the landing page uh, and I want to give you a glance of the animations because I want to keep uh, this animation right here that we have in the desktop version of the website and we can do the same thing basically it's really easy on the mobile version of the website because as the user scrolls down uh, we can keep the image stick in the background uh, and we can actually move uh, the second section uh, as the user scrolls down so it's really simple train your brain to actually think about the animations as you design now let's move on designing the next page which is the playlist one and we almost have everything in place the only thing that we need to remove is this image this bunch of text and this call to action that we don't have in the page plus so we can change the month name to the playlist one Let's move that in the center of the hero section and again I'm using the same font size that I have of, on all the titles of the website so consistency guys is crucial to create a professional experiences so keep that in mind. And in this section right here we are gonna have something similar yet different and let me show you why. So let's start by copying the first track with all its info and as you can imagine we don't have enough space to add all the infos right away and again I don't actually want to display all the content uh, right away in the website because it's going to be too much, too confusing, not that fast to consume because for one track uh, it's okay, we can display everything, uh, but imagine if we have like 50 tracks uh, and uh, multiply that by three, name of the artist, name of the track and name of the album is going to be a mess uh, and super long to consume. Instead what I want to do is I want to put a call to action uh, a button basically beside the name of the track. In that way if the user wants to just see the name of the tracks uh, he, can, he can see all the names uh, of the tracks uh, available in the playlist uh, and if someone wants to see a specific information about a specific track uh, he can click the button uh, and you can see all the info that he wants. And these are the th kind of things that you need to think about when you optimize the desktop version of websites uh, for mobile devices because uh, for instance here you can't put all the information right away but you need to find other ways to display the content uh, and to create at the same time uh, a very fast UX. So for the icon I've used the ones that I have in the call to actions in the navigation bar in that way we keep consistency plus uh, the user already knows of what this icon does so it's way easier to understand. Let's duplicate this line just to have a view of if we have multiple tracks, uh, how the layout works. Let's slave a look and I think that it looks super clean with the style, the perfect style that we have on the entire website. Let's resize the entire composition here and the last thing that we're missing are the images uh, that we have right here. The very last thing that we need to add uh, are the names of the artists in the playlist uh, and we can put them uh, something like that uh, and it doesn't matter if the Y covers up with two letters uh, it's not that necessary to have everything super clear it's a creative choice uh, right now I'm sacrificing a little bit of the UX to have a more creative choice and more creative freedom. So as you can see right now everything is in place, everything is perfectly optimized because we have kept the same style that we have in the desktop version of the website that yet everything is perfectly optimized for a mobile user experience and I think that we have done a really good job, everything is super clear with the same style, with a clear hierarchy and the user experience is super user friendly. A pro tip that I have for you if you want to step up your game in optimizing websites for mobile devices is to actually take a step back, create simpler designs, start from there and try to perfectly optimize them for mobile devices and mobile experiences and in that way you can truly understand what works what doesn't and how to behave in certain situations. So that's all for me, if you like the video smash the like button, subscribe to the channel to see more content about web design, leave a comment down below with your thoughts about this video if you've learned something or if you want to see something specific about web design and I'll see you in the next video.